So it's time for you to unbox and start looking at your quantum timer. First part of the quantum timer that you should probably take a look at is what laptop to buy. This laptop that we have here is just a standard HP ProBook. It's a nice, uh, it's a little older, but higher end um, i5 Intel uh, laptop. Biggest thing that you wanna look for is trying to get as many USB ports as possible. That way you can always plug in your timer, you can plug in a thumb drive, you can plug in a wireless mount, I mean a, a wired mouse, uh, things like that. Um, if in these days, uh, you also would like to look for one that has an RJ45 jack to be able to hardwire in your uh, network connection. If you can't, it's not the end of the world, um, but that's what you should be looking for in a laptop. A good standard solid Windows laptop, it can be Windows 10, Windows 11, uh, as many USB ports as possible, and whenever possible, RJ45 jack for your quantum timer. Uh, now, looking at the actual piece of hardware, your quantum timer here, it's a nice thin box. This is a quantum primary only. Uh, nice thin box. Across the front here, we have an indication light when we turn it on, uh, it, it flashes green. And you can see that your power button is also green as well on your quantum timer. Now, if we take a closer look at the back of the quantum timer, you can see here that there's several connections. First off here is we have our AC and DC power connection here. Uh, this way we can plug it into the wall or if for some reason the power is out in the facility or whatever, you can put in the 12 volt direct battery connection uh, cable in here, uh, plug right here. Uh, next is our USB-B port. Uh, that's gonna connect your quantum timer with your laptop. Uh, the next point here is printer. If you choose to still run a thermal printer or something like that with your quantum system, you plug your thermal printer in there. Next two is our serial ports. These are part of the inputs and outputs of the system. You can use these to connect to a uh, scoreboard, for instance. You can use these to connect to any auxiliary or ancillary uh, product that needs to be connected to your timer, whether it's a webcast possibly to ingest data, maybe uh, another system or something that's taking the data off your timer. Then the next two ports here is your harness ports. So it's labeled HA1 and HA2. Harness ports is where you would connect to whether you're doing a mobile harness uh, on deck or if you're doing deck plates underneath your, uh, and underneath your blocks. Your harness connections, HA1 would be for your start finish end and HA2 would be for your turn end is normally how uh, those connections are made. And then your last two connections here are your start inputs. Once again, start one would be considered for your main start end, the end that you do most your starts at your meet. And then uh, your other start would be for your 50 starts at the turn in the pool or your 25 starts at the turn in the pool, whichever it is. So that's a quick overview of the uh, quantum timer.